Hello, everybody. This is Kelly and Jim from the X-Files Preservation Collection, and we are thrilled to be talking to Susanna Hoffman, Melissa Turner from the episode Chinga. <laughs> Hello, Melissa. How are you today? I'm good. I just called you Melissa. Hello, <laughs> Susanna. <laughs> okay. We'll go back to those days. That was Melissa. definitely Chinga. Everybody knows that episode. It's a, I think it's a fan favorite. To us, it's, it's definitely a fan favorite. We've watched that episode uh, millions and millions of times. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's a fabulous episode. So oh, dark. <laughs> it, yeah, it definitely, it definitely. A lot of people definitely are creeped out by that episode. <laughs> Yeah, the doll, you the know, doll. the doll, they get really, really creeped out. I don't know why. It's just a doll. Do the hokey pokey. Yeah. We that that actually, song going over and over is yeah. what really creeped me out. Just that weird sound. Song. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Okay. Um, uh, first question is, how did you, how did you, and why did you get into acting? Um, wow. Well, you know, I sometimes question that myself. <laughs> what, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, when I was growing up in Montreal, um, in Canada, uh, I was, I started late actually into dance and, and got very into it and went to a, a school that was like, had a special program and blah, blah, blah for dancers. And, and then at, so that was about two years in high school. And then all of a sudden I just, quit and went back to normal life, deprogrammed mm -hmm. myself, took the bun out, went back to regular high school, actually the same high school that Kamala Harris went to, this little side thing there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, anyway, it was went high and, and I think I just was looking for something to fill the um, creative side of things that I liked about dance, but without the, without the, daily ballet all of the ballet world and all of that yeah. and just kind of fell into the acting side of things and it just kind of snowballed and did like the drama class but I was super shy that was interesting but I think a lot of actors actually are and so it was kind of an odd match in a way and but I just kind of found that's where I belonged I guess and then I went to theater school after that and then I started working and blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> it just kind of snowballs I, I I think some people like that was always their dream since they were a little kid not mine just kind of late teens decided sort of to happened. switch gears yeah, yeah. Interesting. interesting very interesting yeah. you know yeah. um you you know um you were also in a couple of uh episodes that uh I'm kind of, you know, a fan of. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that you were you were in an episode of Goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. I think I played a ghost. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah, yes, did. you did. You know, uh, Goosebumps were played in our house quite a bit because, you know, we had, you know, kids and, you know, that was kind of like a mild version of the X-Files. <laughs> Child's version. You, child, you know, child, yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. big child, little child. And then you were in another TV show that um, some people like and some people don't because Friday the 13th, the series. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> how I mean, how was it? Do you was, do you have any memories of those two my shows? Only, my only memory, I think it was at a time where they did a lot of stuff like that filming in Toronto, where I was starting out. And I, I think they were format kind of things. And it was a genre at the time that might not translate too well into the year 2021. But I think it, ha it had its niche. It had its place. It was fun to do. I got to melt. I got to be made out of wax. And, and I was on the cover of Fangoria magazine. Awesome. Great magazine. Um, and I got to, I got to like do like a whole body thing, cast and all that stuff, which actually is a lot of fun. And that's, I mean, when you talk about the behind the scenes, nice. that's such a huge part of things, like the creativity yep. and the, the expertise of those special effects people are it, just amazing. And, and uh, I got to see my face melting and, <laughs> you know, all of that. So that's fun. I mean, in terms of the dialogue or the general plot, I don't know. 
probably wouldn't have been my cup of tea, but you know, it, it served something. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, I do. Can you tell we're horror, horror sci-fi yeah. fans? Yeah, a little okay. bit, you know. <laughs> All right. The episode Chinga. Right. How did you get the role to play Melissa Turner? Well, actually, um, I had, I'm trying to remember the exact flow of it, but I had been in California actually, and then in New York, and then I'd come back to Toronto, I think for the summer. Um, and I noticed that Kim Manners was the original producer director of the X-Files. Yep. Now, especially during COVID, everything is self-tape, self-tape, self-tape. Everything's from home. Everything's in front of your computers. But this is way before that. Yeah. So you audition in person or occasionally you'd have the big old VHS camera and you take a VHS tape of yourself auditioning and then you'd FedEx it wow. to wherever, like all these words that we rarely use anymore. And so when I noticed that Kim was on there, I had, I, I had done a pilot with him years before that and so i thought i'll write him a letter so i wrote him a letter like a real letter not email there was no email yeah. not on my part so i wrote him a letter saying hey congratulations on the x files i'm back in toronto for the summer and um, i know it's filming out in vancouver let me know if anything comes up and so then out of the blue something came up and uh i had to put myself on this like on a VHS tape <laughs> doing it. Can't, I can't even remember like exactly what it was all about. I think it was more of a formality because basically like I think the next day he said, ah, yeah, you got the part um, through my agent. But, uh, but yeah, it was old school, old school letter writing. And uh, it's funny to even think now that that's like just oh, you funny. jogged my memory of that. And so then yep, yeah, so it was great. Ended up doing it and going out to Vancouver, which I hadn't really hadn't been a big part of my circle like I'd done lived in Toronto and worked and lived in LA and worked and lived in New York and worked but I never done Tor Vancouver so it was kind of this really nice thing to land there and be working um and uh, and and he was directing it which is the whole right. it was really nice to see him after quite a few years and and catch up and uh yeah so that's how <laughs> that's great um when you were filming the episode of jenga i'm how long did it take uh to film the entire episode i think as i recall it was like before christmas and then after christmas so i think generally you know my memory is not 100 percent on this but i think in general it took about 14 days i think wow yeah but they had a break in between i do remember that um and yeah i think most episodes i think took a couple of a couple of weeks like four, 14 days filming something like that 10 or 14 say in general it's very it's really fast paced i mean there's not a lot of sitting around thinking about things i think it, television has has a faster pace for sure and there's not a lot of rehearsal it's just sort of jump in and go so you're you hope that you have good chemistry with people and uh and I, the, the little girl Polly was wonderful and pretty mesmerizing. So it wasn't, it wasn't really hard to act that, even though I, at that point I didn't have children or anything like that. It was a different world. So, um, but um, it was a really nice group of people that were involved in that. You, you, that's what you always hope because you really have to go on, um, on chemistry, I think in a lot of situations. So that's right. why casting is, is important. And uh, and then hope for the best. <laughs> right. Th that you, that was another question that I was going to ask was, you know, what was it like, you know, working with, you know, the character, Not you know, set and everything. But yeah, that? Yeah. Uh, what was your, like, you mentioned the chemistry and all. So I, we've heard a lot that, you know, it's like, you always hear it's one big happy family, but what was your experience of, working on the set of the x-files with everybody um i think well all my stuff was with the little with with polly mostly and then blanking on his name who played sort of the love interest kind of sheriff guy yeah uh, 
blanking. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and they were they were great. Um, I didn't have a, Melissa Sue Anderson was really nice during my crazy scene of the door, of the kitchen and everything slamming mm -hmm. and yelling and screaming and everything. But um, we didn't have like I didn't have much. It, it almost felt like a little bit of a separate thing. I think some other episodes, it was like a movie within a movie a little bit. And I think she was involved, but almost not with us, except for that that uh, main scene. There wasn't a lot of interaction with them. So I can't speak to the, the feeling on set with, with the main stars. Um, because and then he was away, <laughs> so, <Yeah. right. laughs> so we had we had the show. We just you know it was ours. No, I'm just right. trying. Um, no, it was it was it was really nice. And Kim, the, I think a lot has to do with the director, right? And Kim, just a, a really great down to earth, down to earth guy. Not fancy, not not a bully, not a bossy, but got, gets things done kind of person. So. I think that really helped as well. Like he was just, he r ran a very good ship. Awesome. Yeah. Kim was responsible for a lot of the best episodes and we've all, we've heard great things about him. Yeah. One of our regrets is, you know, we never got to meet him, right. <laughs> but we love hearing stories about Kim Manners. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's, that was my, I mean, my connection was mostly him. Right. And, uh, and this sort of crazy thing that it was um, uh, um, this, I guess, kind of a special episode because having the added, uh, the writer involved kind of thing um, no, with him, but he wasn't there any either. So it's like, right. it was our own little bubble. <laughs> yeah, that was one of the questions I was gonna ask was what your thoughts were that it was co-written by Stephen King. Oh, I thought that was very cool. Cool. Yeah, but Stephen King was, I mean, at that time was huge and he yeah. still is really yeah. popular, yeah. huge now. Yeah, I, I think it added, a, I hope he likes it, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that element. But, you know, I think the thing is he wasn't around. You didn't see him. I mean, they probably spoke a lot and he saw stuff, but you just, it did, it adds that thought of, oh, wow, I hope, I hope I'm doing this justice but at the same time, I think when you're there and you're and it's all so fast and and you're just go 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 go, you don't really have time to worry or think about that. So um, yeah, so but yeah, definitely added a little extra extra fun to it. So That's yeah, good. he's still he's still filming. He's still creating yeah. tons of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have a house out in Nova Scotia in Canada as well, and he. Just I think that's the second series he's done there, but there was one filming in Halifax last last summer that I was like desperate to get on, <laughs> but I didn't. I always was like, how can I find him and remind him who I am? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, maybe I should have just written him a letter too. You know? There you go. <laughs> well, it's definitely gotten his attention in this, in this time. Yeah. Remember Jingo? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, that was just an, ex an added kind of fun element to it. Right. What yes. was your what was your experience? I mean, you've interacted with the character Polly, you know, um, didn't when you talked to Polly, didn't she state that she was older than she was? Than the character. Yeah. Right. right. I think that happens a lot that they, they can because they want somebody with the, the knowledge of an older, but to play younger. It's like right. when I was 24, I played Jen Pringle and very not science fiction, um, Anne of Green Gables, like the sequel where she goes off to be a teacher. And I was like the rotten, mean girl. And, mm -hmm. um, and I was 24 playing 14. Wow. So now, I think there's, because you want, they had some real 14 year olds, but they wanted some not in the mix that can do. Yeah, it, it, sometimes they cast absolutely age and sometimes they kind of blend it. And I think with the, with the role like Polly, that would have been really hard to have had somebody super, super young, right. um, just because of all the emotion and the storyline. I mean, I remember being a bit worried about her, like, you know, <laughs> don't, don't have nightmares over this. Do you, you know, like it's that, that fine line between reality and, and acting. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I think it's always good when you can have somebody a little bit, a little older who can reflect back a little bit. But how weird has it got to be to be 
24 playing 14. I mean, that's like, <laughs> I'm just like, you're like, we me feast up. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> it was like, fun. you're still innocent and like, you know, I know. It, was, well, and it's a, it was a period thing. Well, I was a fake, I actually was a fake teenager for about like eight years. <laughs> <laughs> a fake child actor I see I wasn't a child actor but I was a fake child actor yeah oh you have to say faux faux that's yeah. right faux child actor faux 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 child I was a faux child still am <laughs> actually so <laughs> there you go. so in that episode there was some debate was it Polly that was evil or the doll that was evil what's your take my take was it was a doll but maybe that's a mother's protective because the doll yeah well it has to be the doll right it does have to be the doll and uh i you probably haven't seen the episode i don't know probably in quite some time mm -hmm. you know um the scene where you're taking the hammer and you're hitting yourself yeah That's now it, it the hammer <laughs> we watch this episode a lot a lot <laughs> and the hammer the first time you hit yourself I looked and I saw the hammer. I go, no, if she hit herself, it the claw side is hitting your skull. <laughs> that would have dropped you right then and there, you know? You're tougher than you than you think you are. Exactly, you know? And then that's the scene where Scully grabs the doll and throws it in the microwave. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And the doll the doll never forgot, you know, what happened to her, you know, and somebody would like to see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, I'm sorry. This sorry is the doll that Poor little girl. was shoved into the microwave and mm -hmm. then the fisherman, you know, pulled it out, <laughs> you know, Oh God, that's very creepy. That's what. Sounds yeah, like. that's what a lot of people have said. You know, <laughs> people are like, "How can you have that in your house?" Yeah, but she's still Is around. Children? <laughs> yeah. Do they we play don't let them play with her? They, no. No. <laughs> they go, Let's play with Jenga. <laughs> no, she would be more of a she would be more of a parenting tool. Like, be nice. Or we're gonna <laughs> Great. Now, at what well, after the episode aired? You know, how, I mean, um, did you get more recognized? Because a lot of people have said that, you know, they were they got more recognized and, you know, a little bit more fan base. A little bit. Um, I'm trying to think. It's 90. Yeah, it's funny. It, it kind of came at it. I it it aired in, in 98, right? 1998. Mm -hmm. February. Yeah. Yep. And then I actually had my daughter on March 7th, 1999, and kind of took a bit of a step away from things. So I mm -hmm. think in that, in that way, I think a lot of people saw it, but it came at a time where I was sort of changing gears a little bit in terms of my focus. I had everything had been about, uh, about acting and being here, being there, and then all of a sudden, I was completely smitten with a non-devil child. <laughs> I should have had that doll. Um, and uh, yeah, so definitely I still get people that, that I'll suddenly get a message um, saying, oh my God, you're, I, I turned the television on or I turned some ch internet channel on and, and there you were and, and things like that. It, that be, and that's the, that's what's amazing about all these things. They come around, they come back and they come back. Um, and, uh, or people have just decided like message you on F messenger or Facebook or one of those things, just out of the blue, someone saying, are you the person, are were you Melissa or, or and yeah. uh, just, and you have no idea like what country this person is in or anything right. just out of the blue. Um, so yeah. And, and there's, you know, I think a lot of these shows, they kind of, they they have a renaissance. They come back, and suddenly people are binge watching all of the X Files again. Yeah. yeah. Were you a fan of the X Files before or I and admit after? I'm not a horror person. 
I was I the type of person that would not go to a horror movie because I knew that I would close my eyes the entire time and probably waste my money because I'd be terrified <laughs> and uh, watching anything. So it's kind of funny that I've done, a, I felt like I had a, a sort of a mini career of uh, horror things. Um, and so that the, the irony there, uh, yeah, probably not so much. I'm, I, I, I think, uh, easily scared <laughs> or was. Did you watch the, the, the uh-huh. ep- did you watch oh, yeah, the episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, if you've been in something, then you can watch it because then, you know, it's like I did an episode recently of, um, what's it called? Oh, another horror thing here. And I, uh, it was, it's a series. Oh, and I'm just blanking completely. My brain's as if anyway, they had a little screening of it and at a theater cause it was a new series or whatever. And I brought a friend and I didn't realize how terrifying it was. And we were sitting there and because they showed a couple of the couple of the episodes and we were just like sh- shaking and I felt so terrible that I had brought her because she was just like screaming. <laughs> I realized, okay, that's why we're friends. We don't do this very well. <laughs> anyway. But she she added to the uh to it, the it made it atmosphere. it made me realize it was good because uh yeah. it got us, where she, you know, at least they weren't laughing. Right. Because <laughs> there's exactly. a fine line. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, that episode, you know, I mean, right now we have we have a 16 year old daughter. You know, she did the, you know, she's 16. The X-Files is it's an older show, yeah. you know, but her number one episode. Uh, yeah, Dad, can I watch Chinga? <laughs> you know, it's her it's her favorite episode. Yeah. You know. And I'm sure she giggles at some of it, too. No, she does not like the doll. Yeah. You know. Well, it's because you've made her look at it every time she wanted something for you. (laughs) (laughs) We've traumatized her. Yeah, that's it. Jenga therapy. Well, you know, with all the props and stuff we have, she's she's gotta she's just gotta be used to it. (laughs) Absolutely. You know, what was it? Um you you've touched on it a little bit, you know, earlier. Um any stories about Kim Mayners? Just that he was this, it's funny because I think some people, like, especially if you're not in the business, you know, you think of a director being really slick and, you know, Mr. Suave kind of like, I don't know, looking like George Clooney or, I, you know, that sort of look, you know, that sort of macho guy. And Kim looks like some guy that just got off a motorcycle or something or a horse and <laughs> just real down to earth, nothing like the most unpretentious, un... Um, you know, I'm, I'm Kim Manners type at all. Like just this, like, yeah, just this, like he, he honestly could just look like somebody who was, I don't know. Yeah. And seriously just got off some horse in, in, <laughs> in Montana or something. I don't know. Like he just had this kind of like cowboyishness about him, but I think he also really, really played away from Hollywoody kind of stuff. And, uh, he he just didn't seem like somebody who who had a it's he he fit in in a funny way because uh he wasn't he wasn't your typical hollywood tv director and uh that that says a lot <laughs> by the way he was successful yeah well we've uh, heard a really we've nice heard, guy too yeah like, we've heard great stories about and him. never got all like that whole but there, it is a pressure cooker you need somebody who's gonna lead the ship you know and and you there's a lot on them or whatever um but that can go in different directions it could be somebody very focused and no nonsense or you can have somebody who's just like freak uh using that power in a negative way and he he was so opposite to that and uh he just looked like he was having fun like he doesn't he just looked like somebody who was having fun like it wasn't it was you know he just liked what he was doing but it, just the antithesis of what you would think of when you th- thought of that sort of that uh, if you were going to cast a Hollywood television director, it would not be Kim Manners. <laughs> well, you know, I, Kim Manners is he had a style and the way he was on set with, you know, all the actors and actresses. And, you know, I mean, everybody loved him. And the episodes proved that, you know, he was a really, really great guy. I think he really liked actors, too. Yeah. Um, although again, he wasn't very actory. 
uh, how can I put that better? Like he wasn't somebody who was, you know, very dram, very sort of like intense or that kind of thing, but he somehow was someone who could absolutely say the right words to get the performance that he wanted. And he was so great with, with Polly. Like that's where I don't always like, like the child being in a position on a television show, like it can, it can get weird. And uh, it, weird isn't the right word, but just it, especially like a horror thing and something, but he just made it work, you know, and um, was, was, had a really, really great touch with, with her and I really loved watching that. So um that yeah, that's that's great to hear. Yeah, I tend he, to worry about the kids. <laughs> it's like yeah. my thing. Well, and I, I just like the way he yeah, because she had to have a lot of emotion and stuff and he didn't he he did it and and, and I, like he just as I said very regular guy and and not too heavy handed. Well, it, it, you know, it showed, you know, in the episodes that you know he's done, it showed, you know, the actors you know, and they just came out fantastic. Thanks. <laughs> so speaking of Polly and her relationship with Chris Manners, um, Chris, I mean, Kim, yes, thank you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she told us like, that was one of her big memories from it was her relationship with him. And um, he gave her one of the Polly dolls, the one Aww. that the you know the screen one that she carried around so she still has that doll and it oh my comes God. out at christmas <laughs> <laughs> every year so wow. i mean that's a fun story but where i was going was she also told us how like she really loved the props department and like she would talk about all the gory props and i'm guessing probably that wasn't your <laughs> oh yeah no props are good. I, I i i thought it was fun i mean in terms of the props for me it's more that like that weird scene with all the uh, the doors that i remember the drawers in the kitchen slamming and, yep. and and just the mechanism of all of that was just like yeah as i said i think for me looking at the behind the scenes all the special effects of of, yeah. of horror the, that genre is so interesting and um i mean because you don't get that in a romantic comedy or to, 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 you know, it, it, that's the, that's a really fun, that's, it, it's this massive creative uh, element. So I don't know if I was like obsessed with looking at the props, but yeah. <laughs> I could see also as a little, as a little girl, right? Like so cool, all this stuff. Yeah. And, and the sets were really good. Like the set design is such a, I think, oh, well, I think for the expo, especially they had amazing set decorators and set design people like I remember that bedroom with the with the um record going round and round and yeah. it, it just felt like it was lost in a time warp you know it was just it was smoky it was that I had you know it was and and that's they have to create that world and yeah. really quickly between episodes so it's all the stuff yeah, that amazes us yeah that's what amazes us the you know the props department the fx guys you know they're like they're like magicians, the stuff yeah. that they come up with and how they do it. Yeah. Well, and I think they're, I mean, of course, the leading actors in the storyline are what drives it. And I think that's why X-Files possibly stood out even more because of their relationship and the characters. Um, but such a, you know, such a big part of that is to make things believable. And, yeah. um, and they, I, I think that's, and now, I mean, even how many years later, 23 years later, whatever, 24, a lot of that I think is done much more digitally now, but it was all mm -hmm. sort of start of a lot, a lot of that. I, I don't know much about that side of things, but yeah, um, definitely I, I'm, I'm with her. I'm very fast. Like I liked to watch all of that stuff and see what they were doing. And yeah. And see how it all worked. The rubber hammer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You know, I mean, the, the hammer, you know, I'm like, I have a question. When you walked into the bedroom, you know, and Polly was sleeping with the doll, you know, I, 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 every time I watch it, I say, just grab the doll and rip its head off. 
<laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And then it would have ripped my head off, though. <laughs> That's true. It could have. Yeah. Grabbed the doll, and the doll would have attached itself to my face. <laughs> and eaten my nose. I don't know. Like a yeah. an alien face hugger. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to ask. You'll have, yeah. Stephen King, why did she not grab the doll? There you go. You can ask him that. Because if you did, we wouldn't have had an episode. Exactly. Well, that, yeah. And, and that you wouldn't episode, have a microwave doll. That's right. True. And that, but that episode is just like a lot of other episodes of X Files. Um, there definitely could have been a part two. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, would have been nice. You know, I mean, when the fisherman pulls the burnt doll out of the, you know, the water. So creepy. It could have been, you know. No. Yeah. If you were a fisherman and you pulled up your <laughs> lobster trap and there was a burnt up doll in there, would you really take it home? Why don't you be like, ah, oh, yeah, no, you're going back in. Exactly. <laughs> if there's a burnt doll, whose doll was it? And where right. are they? <laughs> exactly. I don't want nothing to do with the burnt doll and I pulled up out of the... Yeah, uh, the, 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 the how was the supermarket scene? Oh, that was really cool. Because, well, except for it wasn't for me. Like, you only see how cool it is after you. Because you have to yeah. act all of that. It looked really cool. Yeah. But I have to say at the time, I didn't, like, it was sort of like, now you're seeing this, now you're seeing that. So a lot of, a lot of schmacting. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I thought it was really cool how they did it. But again, that was all done after. So... Uh, but it worked. Yeah, I know. Maybe I maybe watching it. I can't remember exactly. I probably probably might knowing me. I probably watched it going. Oh, if I knew that's how the guy really looked, I would have done this. No. Yeah, <laughs> great passion to have. So fun to meet you guys. We love it. Yeah, we love it. And we're thrilled to have met you. Yeah, we're absolutely thank thrilled. You. you know, you just you, you we've you made our night. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye.